Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Created to Learn. I am your host, Alec Pay, and on the show with me today is Pastor William Weed, but I call him Pastor Will. So, awesome. <laughs> good morning, Pastor Will. Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning. Uh, pastor Will is the senior pastor of uh, Solid Rock Ministries. Am I correct? That's correct. Yeah, Solid, Solid, Solid Rock Ministries Church in Portage La Prairie. Yeah, in Porters of Perry, Manitoba, uh, along with his wife, Dorothy. Uh, but prior to that, um, he was here with us in the city of Saskatoon at Faith Alive Family Church, where he had served as the family guy. The family guy, that's right. <laughs> on the pastoral team. And uh, he also had the opportunity to teach at the Bible school. And um, But, uh, you know, after, has it been, how long has it been? Three Four it's years been now? Three years this July that we've been back in Manitoba. Yeah, and, um, you know, just a, just a fantastic pastoral heart and just a fantastic teaching ministry gift. And i just so so thankful for, for this man of God and you know, all that he has contributed to the body of Christ. And I just <laughs> cannot wait to, to hear what he has to say to us today. Uh, Pastor Will, if you kind of give, give us maybe just a little bit further detail as to, you know, your ministry background and, uh, and how you ended up maybe even at Faith Alive and uh and possibly even to where you are now today well we definitely have always had a passion for family uh as as the family guy and that's gonna probably be the thrust of what i'm gonna be uh releasing today because you kind of gave me the opportunity with the whole thing with teaching and then yep. centering it around home and family so that definitely hits uh, my wheelhouse and um mm -hmm. definitely a teacher uh from way back mm -hmm. actually uh we started the Christian school uh, back in Manitoba, uh, in Edrins, Manitoba, where I grew up and where I found my wife, actually. And so we were we were married young and always knew that we would uh, do something with regards to ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I took some Bible school training, actually, in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, uh, with Pastor Glenn Stead at the time. All right, yeah. Prince Albert Family Church, and uh, so that was that was fantastic. And then we started the Christian school back after I had finished Bible school in mm. prince albert and so then we ran the christian school uh in our hometown in edrins for uh 16 years wow and so it was uh, quite some time founded it in, in our 20s and then we actually pastored the church for a while so we had been involved in christian education for quite some time and then like you had mentioned we moved up to uh, saskatoon uh, mm -hmm. for, for four years and now we're back in in portage la prairie Mm -hmm. Awesome. And pastoring a church. And so Christian education was something that was very close to my heart and teaching, actually. And I was very excited about the passage of scripture that you gave me uh, <laughs> to to look into first off. And it was the scripture in uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse uh, 15 through 17. Yep. And if you don't mind, I'll just read it. Yeah, uh, sure. And we'll kind of kind of jump off from there. And you know that from childhood, you have known the sacred scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Mm. This was actually the very foundational scripture that grabbed me in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> actually uh, yep. with regards specifically to teaching because I was doing yep. a lot of searching at the time when we were starting Christian school mm -hmm. and, uh, as to what to teach because yep. there is so much information as we all know yeah uh, in in the world <laughs> and, and me <laughs> starting out kind of life mm -hmm. uh, in my 20s with our own family uh, etc I had had just a real passion to really want to know the correct uh, way to teach what to teach yeah how much actually it would uh, would change me and so I was shocked <laughs> how much <laughs> it changed me in the whole process and I think that's uh, a lot of what it was what what it was really about right. uh, and, I, and I think that searching and that digging for teaching and and what to teach mm -hmm. really comes out uh, of course teaching is a is a vast subject but connecting it to the home really really hones it in for me oh, yeah. uh, specifically because <laughs> i i think biblical pattern uh, biblical parenting is just such an incredibly important 
uh, role for the body of Christ, specifically with regard to teaching. Right. And so um, that, of course, started us on that direction in such a in such a profound way, being so involved with, with Christian school, etc. Mm-hmm. And another another passage of scripture that really that really caught me uh, was uh, from the Old Testament. It's Deuteronomy six verse one. And a very familiar passage of scripture right around the patriarchal uh, (laughs) period uh, in Bible times. Yep. But of course, uh, patriarchal time being led by the patriarchs and uh, Moses declaring the greatest command. And he says, uh, this is the command, the statutes and the ordinances of the Lord your God. That he has instructed me to teach you. And so there's our trigger word for our whole (laughs) teaching thing. Yeah. Yeah. to, To teach you. So that you may follow them in the land that you're about to enter and possess. And then continuing on in Deuteronomy chapter 4, he says, of course, listen, Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words that I'm giving you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk uh, along the road. When you lie down and when you get up, bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be as a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Yeah. And 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 just such foundational type uh, passages of scripture that would just get a hold of me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I would just be I would just be passionate about these as as the greatest commands. Yes. Commands. Yeah. And it would just do something on the inside of me, um, the importance of teaching, the importance of teaching and commanding our children uh, hmm. in the way of the Lord. Um, there's so much that happens uh, as we impart not just information, but we're really imparting our lives. Because right. obviously this command in Deuteronomy is not about just having a bunch of head knowledge. Mm-hmm. It's about this is lifestyle. It is. <laughs> like, it I mean, is. Yeah. This is lifestyle mm-hmm. and the focus of teaching uh, and what we're imparting in our teaching Absolutely. is so very, very, very important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, go ahead. Um, ladies and I just want to, I, I just want to just point out here real quickly for, for our viewers that um, um, I, I can, I can listen to pastor will and for the, for the very reason, because I, for the very reason that, his uh, his this whole idea that he's been talking about it's all backed up by his life he's not just saying a whole bunch of words just to kind of get you stirred up and pumping information to you because i've seen it firsthand especially with his children because his children right now are currently serving in our church at faith life family church and they have just become uh some of the biggest blessings that we have in our church they just have an absolute servant's heart. They love God with all their hearts. They're serving, and they're just they're they're there when you need them. And um, and this is the fruit of of of, of, of their ministry, and um, and and that's why I can stand behind all of what he's been saying because you know this is this is the fruit of it. You can see it in the lives of their children, and um, I've seen it firsthand because I've gotten to know them. Uh, uh, at that level, you know, being in the same church and um, and just seeing their heart, seeing their passion for God and all that. And so and that's why I stand behind what he's saying right now. So I really would encourage you to open up your hearts and just pay attention to what he's going to be saying for the next few minutes. So keep going, Pastor Will. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that. I, I had the opportunity of of, of teaching in Bible school. I think I just kind of got carried away sometimes too. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. And, and I really appreciate that. And, and going back to some of the patriarchal foundations, I, I think these foundations have been somewhat lost uh, possibly even in New Testament church, but it is a New Testament church as we saw right from the passage of scripture, right from the beginning uh, in second Timothy chapter three because it's it's speaking directly about the men of god people of god it's not just men there of course it's uh, not gender specific there it's open to, to men and women but that the man of god would be thoroughly equipped for every good work yeah. and i really appreciate you mentioning about our children we really poured everything into our children we really mm. knew that we had a biblical mandate mm. in our hearts to train our children in the way that they should go to train our children um and and command them 
in the ways of the Lord. And, and just to pull up another scripture, uh, since you gave me the go ahead to continue to preach, and I really appreciate that. Thank you, you take it away. You take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham being another patriarch, and, and uh, it was mentioned to Abraham specifically even before the law. So we saw Moses and some of the command towards Moses to train his children diligently mm -hmm. uh, after him. But Abraham, uh, Genesis 18, verse 17 through 19 said, uh, and this is maybe a familiar passage to, to you as well. Then the Lord said, should I hide on what I'm about to do uh, from Abraham? Uh, Abraham is to become a great and powerful nation and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. Mm. For I have chosen him yep. so that he will command uh, for I have chosen him so that he will command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord hmm. in doing what is right and just. And so the, the entire promise that was given towards Abraham hmm. hinged on this fact that he was going to command his children after him. Yep. And so there's a lot of foundational type truths here that are so, so absolutely important uh, to us. Uh, and, and they're not just important to us just specifically for our families. But we see uh, right from the Ten Commandments that um, loving God first and then loving our neighbor as ourselves, which Jesus mm -hmm. referred to as the greatest commandments. Yep. Um, of course, the first four of the Ten Commandments have to do with our focus towards God. But we'll notice that the last six of the commandments of the Ten Commandments, the very first one of those last ones, the fifth commandment is honor your father and mother mm -hmm. Absolutely. And this is the first commandment with a promise that all will be well with you yep and and this is a command towards us and it actually teaches us on how to love people properly mm. um, that's why it's the first commandment and it's a foundational commandment i believe for setting society uh in order uh that's why it comes as the first one mm. so i just it just these types of things just got a hold of me on, on how important it is to have that understanding of parental authority within the home Very and nice. understanding that parental authority is more for the child than it is actually for the parent. Hmm. It's, it's interesting to note that um, the, the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother is, is, directed at the children but it's really for the parents <laughs> <laughs> the commandment is really for the parents yes because yep. they're the ones that are authorized by god yep. for the training of the young people and yep. so it's really important uh how we actually train and how we actually parent and be mm. very con conscious of of the way we relate and communicate and really teach mm. our children um i believe there's a the lost art of parenting <laughs> is, <laughs> is, is being restored in our society and <coughs> really needs to be restored in our society. Absolutely. So that the hearts uh, of the children can really be turned back towards the fathers and the fathers towards the children. Mm -hmm. And so I just think some of these things are just so absolutely vitally important. Yeah. It's that whole family dynamic that's being lost. And I, and I, and I appreciate that you mentioned uh, Abraham because, um, even even just in that uh, even just in the, at the beginning of that chapter when Abraham was called uh, in in Genesis twelve he says get out of your country from your family yes. not necessarily from your family but and he yes. says and I like the and I like the last part of that verse he says he says in you all the families of the earth will be blessed that's right so right then from that moment on we knew that God's interest was in families yes. And so, and that's why, that's why I really appreciate, you know, that, that, that you said that, that, you know, we go into all these different commandments and primarily it's all centered around families, children and parenting and, and marriage relationships. And we right. see the family dynamic right from the get go, from Absolutely. all of these commandments to all these different people like Abraham, uh, Moses and all these different people about training your children in the ways of God. And, um, and it's unfortunate, you know, that, you know, you could talk the talk, right? That's right. A lot of these people, and I've seen people, they could have a tremendous preaching gift, speaking gift, but their little kids are little devils, you know? <laughs> that's <true. laughs> so, Unfortunately, that's, that's a travesty. That's not, yeah. 
I don't, I, you know, I really have compassion for people because a lot of times the backgrounds that they've come from or they haven't had necessarily good examples of training or, or that kind of thing. But, but even though that was so foundational in the patriarchal period, like we were talking about, it's a New Testament command as well. Mm -hmm. um you know paul talks about it and yep. and paul says qualifications specifically like i mean new testament commands towards fall of fathers and eldership i'll mm -hmm. just read a couple of passages here quick yes sure. uh, out of first timothy 3 verse 4 uh one of the commands towards elders is one who manages his household competently having his children under control with all dignity oh, wow. okay. <laughs> you know and uh first timothy 3 verse 12 deacons mm -hmm. must be husbands of one wife managing their children in their own households competently um that's so this is important because it's just as it's just as important as it was in the patriarchal period. We might say, yeah, that was the patriarchal period. You know, that's Old Testament. That's that's not something that's not really that relevant. Mm -hmm. But Paul's very clear on bringing it into the New Testament. And as we know, uh, the Ten Commandments still have application in the, in the New Covenant, even though Jesus narrowed it down to just two commands. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor, uh, love God and then love your neighbor as yourself. Right. But as I pointed out earlier, the first command out of the out of the commandments directed towards having to love mankind is in the way that we honor our yeah. father and mother that's and how that's so extremely important to be part of uh, a Christian, a Christian life, a Christian standard. Mm -hmm. um, we're really stewards of God's children. And this is what we recognize from from a young age that our children really didn't belong to us. Mm. they belonged to god yeah and we were and we were stewards of them and of their hearts we had them for a very short time but we were training them and teaching them for their benefit not for our benefit no there's a lot of valuable things that you get out of being a parent like i mean it feels good to be a dad <laughs> it feels good to be a, a father you know you feel you feel respected you feel yeah. honored you feel you feel all these things but how you continue to set the patterns of instruction and, and this is where the instruction comes in again. Mm. So importantly, it's not just the information. It's, it's what information is there and how it's given to the child and how the child responds. Yes. It's this whole lifestyle of fathers being very attentive mm -hmm. to their children and the teaching that's happening uh, in their mm. lives. And, and knowing that we have the authority as parents to put those parameters. A lot of that is being robbed in our society that parents yeah. don't feel like they're equipped to set those parameters around their children, which is so extremely important right. in, in what gets taught. Absolutely. Um, because we're responsible before God for what gets taught to our children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and with, the, with the knowledge um, <clears throat> you know, in our world, just crazy, explosive <laughs> yeah and what and what young people have access to absolutely yep. it's just so important that the information gets funneled through parents who know what they're doing and and who yep. have real biblical godly <laughs> standards there I've, I've, I've always said even to my wife that uh you know it's unfortunate that um a lot of people have used the ipad as the babysitter Oh no! Oh, see, yay, yay. <laughs> dangerous. You definitely would hit a chord there with us. We, <laughs> for us, when we were training our kids, it was it was Disney movies for the most part, <laughs> and that kind of thing. But we already saw the trend way back then um, yeah. that you have to really watch the information because that is the focus of the teaching. Yeah, like even even some of the stuff that's that's some some of the things that you can even access over yes. the internet or, or the computer is sometimes even unintentional half the time. Yes. Yes. And, and this is where we need to be careful because I, I, will, I will say first that my son doesn't, does not own a device. He's sure. 11 years old. He does not own, own a device. He doesn't have a phone, doesn't have a tablet. Um, of course we let him use ours, but it's yeah. monitored. Yeah. And exactly. um, I, I've talked to parents over and over again. And it's, it's, it's shocking to me that a five-year-old, a six-year-old, has their own device mm -hmm. because for the very simple reason is because they wanted it because right. their friends have it. That's right. But, not, mm, not a good enough reason. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but this is so great. I mean, I, I absolutely love this because even though we've kind of, uh, I, I wasn't expecting, I was kind of expecting the more, the dynamics of 
Bible college settings and, you know, um, people going into the ministry, you know, but, but this, this is, this is so important as well, you know, because this is all part of the aspect of teaching because, because oh, so. it, it basically, it all starts from, from the ground up for it's every person different. to, to whether they go into university or where, because, you know, because, you know, if they don't have that strong foundation for themselves, yes. starting from the home, starting from the mom, yes. dad, and all that, you know, if they go into the university or the college, they're basically they're going to be they're going to be ripped apart. You know, they're going to be introduced to a philosophy that they're not that they're not familiar with. And yeah. so if they don't have that grounding, that solid foundation for themselves, you know, they're not going to be able to stand on their own two feet. So, I, you know, and thank you, Pastor Will, you know, for 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 discussing this, because um, because, you know, this is something that that's really needed, especially for ministerial parents. Yes. For younger parents, especially, um, and the and the and the unfortunate thing, maybe we could talk about this at another time because um, we we really are living in a time when I, I see a lot of single parents, yeah. and that that yeah. balance is not there between for mom and dad and and I, and I vowed and I vowed to my son and to my wife and to myself even that my son will al will always grow up seeing mom and dad. That's awesome. Because, because you know, to tell you the truth, there, there, it was kind of rocky for us there for a little while. Sure. sure. And um, you know, we kind of had our, our struggles and our issues, you know, uh, a while back, and we we're we we're beginning to wonder, um, you know, was there going to be a separation there for a little while? But I probably stayed on board more for my son than any other thing. And of course, awesome. you know, my wife was. Yeah, my wife absolutely. was important as well, but but you so, know what I mean, right? Uh, I wanted my I son to understand that mom and dad is all we're always going to be there, see us together, as in in covenant relationship. Absolutely. To, to see to see that, um, to see that with us, right? And For so, sure. but you know, I'm, and I'm I keep going on all the way up. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm glad you bring that up though too, because we are in a society, uh, even within our Christian environment, mm. where there are a lot of broken homes. Yep. And we can't lose the standard of a mom and a dad or apologize for it because mm -hmm. of what's in uh, what's in the church. But at the same time, the church needs to be understanding enough to be able to embrace uh, single parent homes, um, yep. that, that sort of thing, and continue forward in some of the teaching and training and make up some of the make up some of the difference, make up some of the gaps for, yep. for some of the families, because yep. God doesn't change the standard. No. Nope. God hasn't changed his standard and he's not going to change his standard. Mm -hmm. um, but, but going back to, to information just for a little bit, because you really hit on the very thrust of, of what motivated us. And it's, and it really is wisdom because yeah. we have knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's some of the, the foundation of teaching is the knowledge of the information that we get. Mm. And then there's the understanding and, and understanding is how the information interrelates and accomplishes the desired end. Mm. So that's understanding because we know how to put the knowledge together. But wisdom is how to know when uh, and if the desired end of, is even appropriate <laughs> for godliness. And that's what we really wanted to instill into our children was wisdom. And mm. so I really appreciate some of your comments. Of course, it makes me a proud father when you talk about <laughs> our family, but we know it was all God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we know we can brag on God in it because we, we came from... Uh, while we had mums and dads that were together, uh, for the most part, we came from religious dysfunctional type backgrounds mm. that really uh, had us dig uh, a lot more. But again, we need to be so wise with our teaching and, and know that there's a, a listening mind there that needs to be fed the right information and so that they come to godly conclusions at the end and, yes. and make those choices for themselves. And, yes. and that's really the thrust of, of godly teaching and training yes. uh, in the home. I, I just think it's fantastic. <laughs> I really do. Of course, it's not hard to tell that I'm kind of hooked on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, so, that's so awesome. That's too well. Um, I, again, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's really unfortunate, you know, the, where we've, where we've come to at this point and, um, and uh, you know, and can it be fixed? Absolutely. It's just uh, being able I, I to be, that. Yeah, access to the right information, being around the right people, um, and who who is influencing you, right? Yes. And uh, 
and I, and I like to call this, and I think I may have talked about it even before, on, my, on my last recording, and I think you've alluded to it as well, is that we are we are in the information generation. Oh, well, we are. Totally. There's, just, there's just so much that's available right at our fingertips. You know, you just ask Google anything, and it'll pop up. Sure. Tons and tons of information, but where exactly are you looking? Where are you getting inf information from? That's right. And so I think this is where, this is the reason why I think we need to develop solid, uh, real relationships with one yes. another. Yes. And um, and I and I just love it. I just love it because I I've chosen to stay close to my church, stay close to my pastors, and and people that I that I trust over the years. And and and, it, and to tell you the truth, it's actually a very small number, and then that's very intentional. Right. Yeah. Because I because yeah. I don't go out there and I don't listen to anybody that's anybody. That's I, right. That, um, uh, I'll tell you a funny story. I was uh, talking to a, a younger younger guy, and uh, of course everybody was doing church online, right? Right. And yeah. uh, he was telling me that oh, you know, the church is so great. You know, the technology is so wonderful. And and then he said this to me that you know when, when I'm at home and uh, I listen to and I go online and I have about. I have about, I have about five churches that are broadcasting on my on my laptop right now at the same time, and it's so great, it's so wonderful, you know. It's like, no, I don't. It's not not very. I don't know. No, it needs to be more focused. I think. <laughs> I saw the five churches, live churches, at all at the same time. So, so he's kind of like, yeah. I'm good. You're taking this part, you know, not, not, not a very healthy diet in no. my opinion, but no. anyways, Pastor, well, you know, we can keep going on and on about these sort of things. And, um, you know, I just really appreciate, you know, that you brought up the, the aspect of family, which is, um, which is very, very well needed. And, and, and it really does play a very significant part in the area of teaching. And you've, uh, yes, you, you pointed out the passage where it says that, uh, uh, and teach them to your children, yes. all the things that I've commanded you. And, and that really is the breeding ground for 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 all of us, including myself. And um, I believe it. And uh, and it's and, it, and it's and it's not only it does not necessarily have to be your own children as well. Some of these other younger children, they may have not have a dad, they may not have a mom, they may have not had you know that proper that proper um, uh, solid uh, foundational uh, understanding about a home. So yeah. it really is up to us to to provide them for that, like because like we said, you know, there are many single parents that are out there nowadays. So this is where we need to step step it up and to step in and to provide that 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 understanding for them. It's so awesome. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm I'm yeah. so glad. Yeah, I'm, I'm I really have in my heart to see a, a revival of biblical parenting, and so yeah. Yeah. we'll just keep pushing. Yeah. I would definitely love to have the opportunity to talk to you more about that. Maybe on on our next on our next show, I would I would love to have you come back and maybe we'll Thank talk you. more about that, about the the idea of families, parenting, maybe even maybe even marriages, right? <laughs> and uh, to tell you the truth, people, I, I, uh, he's he's definitely helped me, you know, shape my family, you know, love my wife more, and uh, it's been it's been a real blessing to to receive from Pastor Will and Dorothy over the years, and even to this day, even right now. Uh, I'm just getting so much information. It's been, it's been, it's been awesome. Thank you, Alec. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you for joining us today and be sure to check back one more time again for another exciting episode here on created to learn. God bless you. <laughs>